Okay, so we've got our thread carriage installed and our thread's been properly routed. So now we're ready to actually begin the wrapping process. There are a few key tools that you'll want to get started. First off, your pair of thread clippers, which is great for just quickly cutting thread as you work down the rod, a straight edge razor blade, and most importantly, your burnishing tool. So when we get into the wrapping process, there are a few key points that we need to focus on. First and foremost is tension. Tension is one of the most important things for keeping your thread wrap secured and it looking good on the rod itself. What you can use to measure this tension is actually our tension rod mounted at the top of our HWS hand wrapper. What we want to achieve is the tension rod pointing directly at our chest. You don't want it bowed down too far pointing at the wrapper or too loose having it point up towards the ceiling. Once we're ready to actually begin the wrap, we're going to take our thread, bring it up to the blank, and you're going to wrap it around by hand two times. Holding pressure with our finger, we're going to take the thread coming off of the spool and jump over top of those rotations, securing the thread in place. Maintaining pressure with our finger, we're going to rotate the rod two to three times, making sure that everything is held tightly together. We can then release and continue our wrap. After you've laid down six to eight rotations, you can take your thread clippers and cut what we refer to as the tag end off of the rod blank. You can then proceed to finish wrapping down the rod. When we get to the transition from the blank onto the guide foot, that's where our process earlier by prepping the guide foot and grinding it down will really come into play. By making that nice smooth transition, the thread should just roll right from the blank up onto the top of that guide foot without any effort. During this process, tension is one of the most important things to maintain on the thread itself. You don't want to have too much tension and have the tension rod pointing directly at the hand wrapper. And you also don't want it to be too loose, otherwise your guide wrap will ultimately unravel and come apart. Once it's secured in place, we're going to carefully remove the masking tape, being especially careful not to pull the guide foot out from underneath the thread wrap. We can now continue wrapping our guide in place. If any gaps form, we can use our burnishing tool to press the thread back into place, eliminating any sloppiness that may form in our guide wrap. Once we get about an eighth of an inch away from the fork on our guide foot, we'll actually want to put what we call a pull through in between the wraps to secure the thread in place. We're going to make a loop out of a small piece of thread, preferably in a different color, and put it directly underneath the thread we're currently wrapping. The key point to remember with a pull through is the loop goes the direction that you're actually wrapping the guide. So we'll continue to wrap over our pull through at least six to eight rotations around the rod blank before actually coming in to complete our thread wrap. So holding pressure with your finger, we're going to release some pressure from the spool, take our thread clippers, cutting the thread, we're going to drop that piece through the loop we created with our pull through. Once through the pull through, we can release pressure with our finger holding pressure with our other hand, grab the two loose ends 
and pull the thread back underneath the thread wrap. I can go ahead now and take my straight edge razor blade, laying it flat against the back of my wrap, pull the thread into the blade, cutting it cleanly from the guide wrap. And you've successfully wrapped on your first guide.